Georgina of the Fifth. Georgina. Georgina Gascoigne. Georgina. Has anybody seen her? I say, have you all gone deaf? Don't you hear me? Where's Georgina? I want Georgina Gascoigne. The speaker, Ingrid Bridge, a small, perky, spindle leg junior, jumped onto the nearest seat, raising her shrill voice to its topmost pitch. Twice shouted the Georgina Gascoigne. With aggressive energy calculated to make herself heard above the babel of general chatter that pervaded the schoolroom. Her effort, though far from musical, at any rate, secured her the notice she desired. Hello, there. Stop that noise. It's like a dog howling, irately commanded a girl in spectacles who was cleaning the blackboard. And get down from my desk this minute. Who said you might climb up there? Look here, you kid, what are you doing in our classroom? Take yourself off at once. Fly. Scoot. The kid, however, stood her ground. Shan't move till you've answered my question, she replied with aggravating impudence. I want Georgina Gascoigne. Why, there she is all the time. Where? Where? Under your very nose, you stupid baby. Get down from my desk, I tell you. The junior cast what was intended to be a withering glance before she descended. Georgina Gascoigne, why couldn't you answer when I called you, she demanded abruptly. Georgina paused in the act of sharpening a lead pencil and eyed the intruder. Who asked you to come in here, she retorted. You babes must keep to your own classrooms. Hey, presto. Vanish. And be quick about it, interposed Myra Johnson. Shan't. Not till I've spoken to Georgina. Cheek. Suppress that kid. But I've got a message, squeaked the babe, as sundry arms of justice thrust her summerly in the direction of the door. Oh, I have really a message for Georgina from Miss Duff. She's to go to the library. Now. Then why couldn't you say so at first? You never gave me a chance. Georgina threw the half-sharpened pencil inside her desk and banged down the lid. What does Miss Duff want with me? She asked in some consternation. Are you sure she meant me? A summons from the headmistress rarely boded good fortune to the recipient, and the girls stared at Georgina with interested sympathy. What have you been doing? murmured Monica Dawkins. Glad I'm not in your shoes, proclaimed Daisy Hurst. Oh, Georgina, I am sorry for you, bleated Alma Richardson. I've not been doing anything, protested Georgina indignantly. You've no need to look at me as if I were a cross between a criminal and a martyr. Here, you babe, what did Miss Duff say? Only that you're to go to the library. And you'd better be quick, because she said. Tell her to come at once. Said it in her snappiest way, too. I shouldn't be a month about going if I were you. Hello. There's the bell. Ta-ta, I'm off. I wish you luck, and Ingrid Bridge fled to the region of her own classroom, with a grin on her impish face. Though she might rail at the impudence of the small fry. Georgina was not above taking a hint. Headmistresses do not lightly brook being kept waiting. So she started at a run up the passage. Turning over in her mind every possible crime which she might unwittingly have committed. Can't remember using the front gate. Or not changing my boots. Or talking on the stairs, or... Oh, wow. Here I am at the library. Well, whatever I've done, I suppose I'm in for it now. I hope she won't absolutely wither me up. So far from looking withering as Georgina entered the room, the principal wore an unusually encouraging and benign expression. She was a handsome, large, imposing woman, with a stern cast of features, and was held in great awe by the whole school. As a rule, seniors and juniors quailed alike under the glance of her keen dark eyes. Come here, Georgina, she said blandly, as her pupil stood hesitating near the door. I want to have a little talk with you. I've been looking over your reports for the last few weeks, and I find that you've done well. 
so well, that I consider the standard of the upper fourth is too easy for you. I think you ought to be able to manage the work of the fifth form, and I'm going to move you there. Georgina stared at Miss Duff, too surprised to answer. Such a proposal as a change of form was absolutely the last thing she could have expected. In the middle of a term, it was surely an unprecedented happening. For the moment she scarcely knew whether to be alarmed or flattered at the honour thus thrust upon her. You may find the mathematics a little difficult, continued Miss Duff. But Miss Woodville shall coach you until you've caught up the rest of the class. She Miss Woodville shall coach you until you've caught up the rest of the class. She can also go over the arrears of Latin translation with you. With that help, you shouldn't be so far behind. I've spoken to both Miss Slade and Miss Douglas about it, and they fully agree with me. Do you think yourself you'll be able to manage the work? I don't know, I'm sure, stammered Georgina. I expect I'm behind in maths. But. But you must try your best. I shall trust you to make a great effort. I should be very sorry to have to put you down again. Come with me now, and I'll take you to your new form. Georgina followed the principal with her head in a buzzing whirl. It seemed like a dream to be suddenly translated from the lower school to the upper. She wished she could have had a little time to get accustomed to the idea. She would have liked a day's preparation at least. So as to think the changeover and discuss it at home. Miss Duff, however, always did things in a hurry. She never had a moment to waste. And at present. She whisked her pupil along the corridor and into the fifth form room with almost breathless energy. Here's Georgina Gascoigne, Miss Douglas, she announced. We'll try if she can manage the work, and I've arranged with Miss Woodville to give her the extra coaching we spoke about. She can bring her books from her old classroom. Thus saying, she bustled away to take a history lecture, leaving the new member of the fifth standing in much embarrassment. The eyes of every girl in the room naturally were glued upon Georgina, who felt herself twitching with nervousness under the scrutiny. But Miss Douglas motioned her to an empty desk in the back row, and went on with the lesson as if nothing had happened. I am afraid Georgina was too agitated to absorb much knowledge that morning. She had not brought notebook or pencil with her. And though at Miss Douglas's request her neighbour rather ungraciously lent her a sheet of paper and a stump of pencil. The notes which she took were scrappy and inadequate. She kept stealing peeps at the other girls. But turning away when she met the anything but friendly glances directed at her. The teacher asked her one or two questions, then, seeing that she did not quite grasp the subject, kindly ignored her. Talk of a fish out of water, thought Georgina. I feel like an eel in a frying pan. I believe these girls are going to be detestable. I shall have to look out for schools. Nor was she mistaken. At eleven o'clock the storm broke. Directly Miss Douglas had left the room for the interval the seventeen members of the fifth turned upon the newcomer. What are you doing here, Georgina Gascoigne, I'd like to know, demanded Edith Arnold, opening the attack. We don't want any fourth form girls foisted on us, proclaimed Janet Hunter. You don't belong to the upper school, urged Charlotte Perry hotly. I didn't yesterday, but I do now, retorted Georgina. Miss Duff's moved me up. Yes, and I mean to stay here, too, she added, facing her opponent stubbornly. Miss Duff must be mad. What can she be thinking of? Better go and ask her yourself, said Georgina, if you think she's likely to listen to you. She isn't generally very ready to enter into explanations. But this is monstrous. It's an unheard of thing, exclaimed Fiona Mawson excitedly. A chit like you to be brought into the fifth. Oh. What a shame. We shan't stand it, rose in such a chorus from all sides that Georgina took the opportunity to make her escape and go to the dressing room. For her lunch. The interval was only ten minutes, and she wished both to break the news to her old classmates and to fetch some necessary books from her. Former desk before the bell rang. The other members of the fifth lingered behind in perturbed consultation. 
they considered they had a just and most pressing grievance. In all the annals of the school, such a case had never occurred before. It had been hitherto inviolable through unwritten law that no one under the age of fifteen should be admitted to the fifth form. A law which they had believed as strict as that of the Medes and Persians. And here was the headmistress actually breaking it. And in favour of a Persian. And here was the headmistress actually breaking it. If Miss Duff had not brought her herself into the room they would not have credited it. It's abominably unfair, broke out Janet Hunter. Because my birthday comes on October 4th I had to stop a whole year longer in the lower school. Yes, though my mother came and begged Miss Duff to let me go up. Well, you couldn't get moved up on your work, at any rate, Janet, chirped Joan Masters. It would have had to be favour in your case. That's not the point. It's a different question. If Miss Duff makes a rule she ought to stick to it. Why half the girls in the form might have come up sooner if it hadn't been for the age limit. You're right, and I can't see why Georgina Gascoigne should be so especially noticed. She's supposed to be clever, I believe. She doesn't look it. Besides, what do we care whether she's clever or not? It's the injustice of the thing that makes me angry. A kid like her amongst us seniors. The idea. Miss Duff may send Georgina up, declared Fiona Mawson. But she can't make us accept her as one of ourselves. I vote we send her to Coventry. We will. She's nothing but a lower schoolgirl, and we won't tolerate her being imposed upon us. She'll be so conceited at finding herself a senior. We'll soon take her pride down, then. She'll meet with a few snubs here, I'll undertake to say. If Miss Duff is going to bring up all the rank and file like that there's no credit in being in the fifth. It's a positive insult to the rest of us. So decided Georgina's new classmates. Jealous for the prestige of their form. And annoyed at the indignity which they considered they were made to suffer in admitting a younger girl among their number. To Georgina or her feelings they gave not a thought. If she met with an unpleasant experience all the better. It might deter Miss Duff from repeating the experiment. That the remove was not Georgina's fault, and therefore that it was scarcely fair to visit the headmistress's act upon her innocent head, did not enter into their calculations. Where they consider their rights are concerned schoolgirls rarely hold mercy before justice. Meantime Georgina, who had gone to break the important tidings to the upper fourth, did not find her old friends as responsive as she had expected. They received her communication with marked coldness. Why should you have been moved up, Georgina Gascoigne, and not Daisy, or Eileen, or I, inquired Alma Richardson, with a distinctly aggrieved note in her voice. Miss Duff always favoured Georgina, said Monica Dawkins enviously. You're six months younger than Viola Sutton, so it seems absurd you should be put above her. You'll be so grand now, I suppose you won't care to know us. It's not fair to the rest of the form. Oh dear. I'm between two fires, thought Georgina, as she hastily cleared her possessions from her old desk. The fifth don't want me, and the fourth are horribly jealous. You're going to have a bad time, Georgina Gascoigne, I'm afraid. I see breakers ahead. Never mind. It's a great honour to be moved up, and father'll be glad and sympathise if nobody else does. The work will be pretty stiff. I expect it'll be all I can do to manage it. But I mean to have a jolly good try. I'll show those girls I can do something, though I am the youngest. Oh, I say. I've only just remembered that Wynne'll be the under-mistress. I'll have to call her Miss Gascoigne whenever I speak to her. How perfectly idiotic. I'm sure I shall laugh. I wonder if Miss Duff's told her yet? What a surprise it would be for her to come into the room and find me there. I wish you'd be quick, Georgina Gascoigne, said Monica Dawkins. I'm to have your desk as soon as you've moved out. It's a nicer seat than mine. Righto, answered Georgina, piling her books on top of her big atlas. You're welcome to it, I'm sure. I think you might all have seemed a trifle more sorry to lose me. 
I don't see any display of pocket handkerchiefs. No, I can't say I'm shedding tears myself unless they're crocodile ones. Please to recollect in future, my dears, when you speak to me, that you're addressing a member of the upper school. You're only little junior girls. Tata, and with a mock curtsy, in process of which she nearly dropped her pile of books. Georgina retired laughing from the fourth form to take her place and try her luck among the seniors.